Hi guys. Okay, so I haven't been making YouTube videos because I've been dealing with a lot of stuff, especially since my dog died. Um, the main issue I've been dealing with kind of is unexplained. Um, I take Lyrica three times a day during the daytime, and at night I'm not on any type of meds. I do take my Lyrica, like, at 9 p.m., but then my next dose of medicine is until 9 a.m. And, um, I've been waking up with my hands like this. Uh, it hurts to try and push them close. Um, it hurts to pull them apart, to use my hands. Um, and I've... I've just really kind of been struggling a bit. Um, yesterday I had like a really bad anxiety because um, I went to, to go use the bathroom and I wasn't able to pull up my own pants. My brain was telling my hands what to do. Like, I consciously thought about it. Like, in every little movement of where my hands needed to go, how to hook my fingers into the belt loops. But my hands weren't responding. They, they attempted to. They twitched a little bit. But it wasn't working. And... With the stuff with the insurance company, because I'm on state insurance, there's not very many doctors I can see. And uh, the last time I went to a neurologist, all they did was an EMG test. And then I haven't seen one since because they told me that they would not and could not do anything for me. Um, the problem has been persistently getting worse. It used to be mainly just mornings that I couldn't use my hands. Um, and it would go away by like 1.30 in the afternoon. And then I could use my hands like a normal person. Um, so it got to the point where I wasn't going to doctors early in the morning. Because I had to be ready for them to see me and I wanted to look right and smell nice and take a bath and I'm not able to do those things by myself anymore or in the process of getting me a home nurse and originally we thought my husband could get paid to be my home nurse since he had to leave his work to come take care of me a little over a year ago and they told us that because him and I got married that he can't be paid as my nurse now because people have abused the system we're still trying to find any way around it because we need him to to work because um, the wheelchair that my insurance company gave me is one that can be picked up at Walmart for $150. Um, and it doesn't fit me because I'm so small. Hold on a minute. Sorry, I had to wipe my eyes. They're, like, bothering me. Um... The wheelchair doesn't fit me right. The foot pegs made it that we were running into things. So I had to make a sling for my feet to rest in. We had to raise the wheels up and lower my seat down. And it still doesn't fit right. I have trouble pushing myself in the wheelchair. Um, my thumbs keep falling down like this. 
instead of staying up like this when my hand is there it just kind of falls I can't even like fully show you the position they're meant to be in um, they're meant to be like this like a hitchhiker thumb that I could do but when I put my hand down my thumb just kind of drops so um, the thumb braces that I had from a few years ago that lock my thumbs into a position I can't wear them because I can't use my hands then which makes it hard um, the finger braces I got are plastic I got them off of Amazon because the hand specialist that I went to go see said that they wouldn't get me silver ring splints through my insurance because my hands can lay flat on a table and not be deformed um which raises the question on how much of my life has to be disrupted by having EDS and all of the accoutrements that come with it or as I like to call it the carry-on luggage before I'm sick enough to get the help people blame others who are on the system as being lazy for not working would you be able to work with your hands like this in the morning would you be able to push yourself in a wheelchair for an entire day or more would you be able to deal with the fatigue the dislocations the migraine headaches the muscle pain and the fact that I can't get the pain medicine that I need which is morphine because I'm allergic to all the other types they've tried me on muscle relaxers and they work half ass basically is how to describe it at best um, or I'm entirely allergic to them and my body swells uh, with my GI issues I'm finding more and more over that I'm allergic to food I'm allergic to certain types and everything else and I can't swallow I have problems chewing where I'll start having popping in my ears because my jaw will move when it's not supposed to I keep begging the GI doctor to just give me a feeding tube so I know what I'm getting is the right amount and that I get vitamins but they said that the insurance company won't because I'm not at risk enough because of the fact that my body weighs 175 pounds I am 4 feet 10 inches tall the weight I'm supposed to be is 90 pounds so all of that extra weight that's coming from swelling is putting more pressure on my joints causing them to dislocate more frequently and giving me a hard time but according to the insurance company I'm not sick enough um, I just want to know when when is being sick enough enough people try and say people that are on disability are lazy I'm not lazy I just physically can't do it I play games on my phone to get Amazon money just to buy braces because the insurance company won't cover them and I don't get enough in social security to pay for them and people wonder 
why I have to go to another city to see a doctor. All my doctors are in Philadelphia and I'm not. And it's hard. When is being sick enough enough? When is what I have to deal with enough to get intervention on? How much pain do I have to be in? How do I show them the pain that I'm in? Because I've gotten so used to just being in pain that I don't know what it's like to not have pain. And whenever I don't have pain, I'm usually hooked up to an IV. And, of course, I'm not sick enough for a IV saline treatment. I'm not sick enough to have a pick line because the doctors, after 12 times of sticking me, can finally get a vein. But when is it enough? That's what I've been dealing with. That's why I haven't made YouTube videos in a long time. And I'm sorry that I haven't been able to bring you guys on any of these trips with me and things like that. It, it's because normally when I'm trying to see these doctors, in order to be taken seriously and actually talked to, I have to be put together more than what I am. They don't even listen to my husband when he tries to explain things now. Most of the time, they talk over him and me, telling me that they're next going to try an antibiotic to see if maybe there's a bad bacteria in my stomach that's making it not digest food, or try and figure out some other way to explain why my stomach is half paralyzed, or why I can't go to the bathroom on my own, or why I can't feel and I have to go to the bathroom after my surgery to remove my gallbladder or why it is that I have to be on so many allergy meds but every blood test comes back negative I've been trying for the last two years to get officially diagnosed with mast cell activation syndrome and the first time the lab messed up on it because they didn't know what they were doing. The second time I had to go to a lab down in Philadelphia because the labs up here can't do the tests that are needed. And the last time I saw the allergist, she wanted me to put myself into an allergy attack and then go down to Philadelphia and then get the test done. It takes an hour for me to get to Philadelphia by an Uber and then have to get these blood tests done. I can't put myself in an allergy attack, wait an hour to get into Philadelphia, and then go to a lab where I have to wait more to then be seen. To me, that's life-threatening. To me, that's endangering my well-being. And they don't understand the simple fact of that's dangerous versus we have to prove to your insurance company what they want to see. I've been through all of the hoops and the labels and the jumps and all of that for the insurance company to only have them say no to a medicine or no to a piece of equipment. Most insurance companies don't even know what EDS is, let alone how to help, let alone knowing that I need a physical therapist who can move my bones back into place. I was told by a spine specialist <laughs> to go to physical therapy with a general surgeon in it 
because that's the closest thing I'll get in Pennsylvania. And I know they're not right. I just haven't found the right doctor yet. I just haven't found the right physical therapist yet. But when am I supposed to stop searching and just have the doctors for me to see? My family doctor doesn't even know. They just give me referrals to uh, whoever I need to see and do their best to listen to what the insurance company wants for me to prove that something's wrong. And it's so hard without having somebody physically here from the insurance company to see me, to see the things that I take as everyday life as that's not normal. Kind of like when I got diagnosed with Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. I had dropped a piece of paper on the floor while waiting in the rheumatologist's office. I bent down to pick it up just like everybody else and every other time. And when I got up, the rheumatologist kind of had a shocked look on her face and I handed her the piece of paper. And she said, yeah, you got that. And I asked her why, because she didn't do a single test on me. It was because when I went down to grab the piece of paper, my entire upper part of my body from like my rib cage up went underneath one of my legs as I was trying to reach for this piece of paper. I had no idea that that wasn't normal. I had no idea that somebody being able to put their foot behind their head wasn't normal. Because when my kids were little, we used to just pretend it was a phone I was talking on and it was normal for me. The way I have to live my life, I don't even know what's abnormal with the way I live and what I do. And that's why it's so hard trying to explain to the insurance company that something's not right. Because I don't know what's supposed to be right and normal. So that's, that's basically what I wanted to share with you guys. I know I've been asked by a couple people why I had stopped making videos and that was the reason why because it started to be too difficult and uh, at some point in time I'll have my husband be uh, the one holding the camera instead of me having a, a uh, clip that's attached to part of the couch holding my camera so I'll try and do another video whenever I can.